you know, it's become more and more apparent that Congress isn't going to stop with all the different changes that they're making. No, I think they're just going to keep adding more and more. There's so much talk going on right now. And, and again, that talk makes people nervous. And I think what happens is, is that when there's uncertainty in what's going to happen with the tax code, people tend to freeze and they just don't do anything because we have to know what the rules are before we can put something into action. And to make it even worse and to cause even more anxiety in the individual taxpayer out there, it is, what is that going to mean to my future security? And Joanne, as a certified financial planner, I want you to talk about where does the financial plan fit in in the tax plan? All right. You know, in my mind, those two plans, neither one can exist without the other one. And it's really important to realize that. And we always start with the financial plan because that's going to let us know what does somebody have? Because we can make a really efficient tax plan if you don't need any money, but that's not going to work to meet what you want in your life. So we always start with the financial plan. We start with what assets do you have and what do those assets need to do for you? What income sources do you have? What expenses? And go from there. And what is it that you want to do? Because nobody has a life where they just want to stay home. If COVID taught us anything, it's like even the introverts were ready to get out. So <laughs> let's you know look at that. But once we have that financial plan, then we have to look at it from a tax perspective. Right. And if we don't have that tax perspective, then that plan isn't going to be as robust as it needs to be, and we're going to be missing something crucial. So let's talk really quickly about the difference between a goals-based plan and a robust financial plan that is really more of an outcome-based plan. And that, that goals-based plan is simply saying, I have a goal to generate X amount of dollars at a certain time in the future. You use a 4% income rate off of it. You can say, well, this is how much money you need to have accumulated. And you can use a simple time value of money calculator to say how much do you need to save at what rate of return right and and that's that's goals based plan or i want to purchase a new car that's going to cost sixty thousand dollars and i need to do that in five years how much money do i need to save in order to get there that's not what we're talking about that's not financial planning no we want to look at all i mean those are both a piece of it but it's not financial planning we're really looking at the whole picture what are those goals you want to do what are your expenses what do you have in putting all of it together. But then a crucial part of that is what is your distribution strategy? And you know that's where the big magic comes in because we start looking at things from a tax perspective. If you're not paying that money for taxes, you can get a lower rate of return and you're better off. And maybe you won't need to take so much out for spending because you're not sending it off to the government. You know, in order to illustrate what you're talking about, we actually created a video, uh, a video that we'll put a link in the show notes to watch this video. The, the video shows the power of good tax allocation. Okay, Everybody talks about asset allocation. We want to talk about tax allocation. And just a quick teaser on what's in the video, and I'm going to encourage everybody listening here to go watch that video. And if you're watching us on YouTube, watch this next video as well. It's about 20 minutes, so it, it, it'll be a good use of your time. But what we did was we took four couples and assumed that they all had a million dollars, that they all had the exact same earnings history, so their Social Security benefits were going to be the same. And we said, what would happen if all four of those people, all with different amounts of money and different types of taxed accounts, so some tax-free, some tax-deferred, some taxable, all taxable, all tax-deferred, et cetera, what's the difference in the outcome just from that tax allocation? And the numbers are shocking. They are absolutely shocking. And so we always say, don't ever save money into anything until you know what the objective is when you want to take the money out. Now, you may not know what the tax law is going to be in the future, but generally speaking, you can, if you know that, then you can start to form that longer term tax plan. Right. And the one thing we do know about tax law is it's always going to be changing. But we plan based on what we know today. And so we say, okay, if we know we're going to have to take this money out, I mean, you've had Ed Slot on so many times, and he's fabulous at talking about the time bomb with the 
IRAs. IRAs. 401ks. And, you know, we have to be aware of that and know if you have that tax deferred account, you're going to have to pay tax on it at some point. And so a key feature of tax planning is saying, okay, when do I want to pay the tax on that? You know, put yourself in control rather than allowing the government to dictate you have to take out X amount once you start required minimum distributions. And that's really what tax planning is all about is deciding how you're going to take your money. But if all you've done is put your money in tax deferred, you really have no choice. And so that's why it's you important kind of paint to yourself start. Into a corner yeah, there. you're stuck. And so you have to start while you're working to make sure that you're putting the money in the right types of buckets and giving yourself tax diversification. So you have some choices once you get to retirement on where you are going to take those funds. And when it, when it comes to tax law changes, if you already have your plan built based on current tax laws, and we get that new tax law that comes in, it's really easy inside of the financial plan to go in and say, okay, these are the tax law changes that were made. This is how it affects your overall plan. These are the adjustments now that we need to make. And they don't become an emotional adjustment. They don't become a knee-jerk reaction. They are a very logical and reasoned discussion of why you need to do things differently. And it requires flexibility. This is one of the reasons, Joanne, why I think that people's investments need to remain flexible. Locking money into something for long periods of time doesn't make any sense because if the tax law changes and you can't change how that money's allocated, you could be in big trouble. I mean, right. I mean, how many times have we seen people where there's a market correction? And they've been so afraid about paying taxes that they haven't been willing to change the portfolio up. But that market correction comes and all of a sudden the amount they lose in the investment is more than they ever would have paid in tax if right. they are stuck on just not having a you know, diverse portfolio. Right. Well, what you're talking about there is really somebody saying, I'm not going to sell something because if I sell it, I might have to pay taxes right. on it. You know, tax avoidance might not be the ultimate goal. We're trying to keep the money in your pocket to do what you want. Starting your route to retirement. 